You know, there's a lot that's going on in the world today. It, it's, we are living in crazy times. And I got to say to you that uh, over this last week, week and a half, as I viewed what's been happening, as I watched the video of George Floyd and, and the life being squeezed out of him, I was so disturbed. I was so grieved by that. And as I watched the, the violence that's erupted since then and just the, the pain that I see happening in the world, I just found myself waking up. Uh, just with uh, just depressed, just with a heaviness, uh, so to speak, in my spirit and just sort of groaning on the inside and just saying, Lord, what is happening in our world? And, and uh, you know, I'm not the kind of person that tends to make a lot of controversial statements. I try not to. I try not to be too political in, in the things that I say. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, especially if you follow me on Instagram, I'm the most boring person to follow because I never say anything. Uh, and uh, on Facebook, I tend not to wade into all the things that people are wading into. I like to sort of blend into the background a little bit on these things. But this week, as I've been sort of watching everything and and just praying about it, uh, I've just been stirred. And, and I've been asking the Lord for, uh, Jesus as, as, the, as a pastor, as a, a leader at Harvest City Church, do I need to say something? And what is it that you would have me to say? And on Wednesday night, I ended up watching a video, which was an interview of Carl Lentz interviewing Pastor or Bishop T.D. Jakes. It was powerful. About an hour and 20 minutes long, I, I thought, oh boy, I, I think I'll watch five minutes of this because this is an, an hour and 20 minutes. And I found myself watching the entire thing. And I found myself sitting on the couch in my living room at different points watching this video with tears streaming down my face. And I realized I can't be silent on this issue. And I realized that as a pastor at Harvest City Church, I've been blessed to pastor one of the most multicultural churches, if not the most multicultural church in our city. And I have many black faces that are watching me on Sunday mornings and listening to me as I preach. And for me to say nothing would be wrong. And so this morning, I want to stand here on this stage where I I stand many Sundays and just say to, to our African community and, and those uh, in the black community that I'm hearing you, I'm listening to you, I'm grieving with you, and I want to stand here on this platform and just declare that racism in all its forms is wrong. We don't tolerate it. We don't want to be a part of it. And I don't want to just stand with you, but I also want to raise my voice and say that as a church, we must stand against injustice in our community in all its forms. In all its forms. And I feel so provoked by the Holy Spirit to not just blend into the background, but to actually be a voice for change. And I've realized that I, that I don't understand a lot of things. We, we've had a lot of conversations around the kitchen table in our home. I've listened to a lot of things. I've been reaching out to different members from, from our own community here within our own church to understand. I attended a rally at the legislature on Friday, after, on Friday morning with my wife because we felt it was important that we stood with you, especially those in our church that are in pain to say, we're with you, we hear you. And I'm not, I, I love the line in the song that Corey sang this morning about erasing all the lines and seeing the truth. I'm not trying to line myself up anywhere other than line myself up with Jesus and say, what is the heart of God? His heart is always for the broken. His heart is always for the, for the disadvantaged. His heart is always for the poor. His heart is always for the marginalized. And if we don't have that heart, we're missing it. We're missing it. And I feel like this is a great opportunity for us as a church 
to even look and say, are we, can we do better in this area? Can we be a greater voice for healing and reconciliation in our community? How do we understand ourselves better? And I think we've got a great opportunity. And I want to encourage us as a church, this isn't a time to dig our heels into our opinions and, and really be so intent on being right. This is a time to understand this is a time to ask questions. This is a time to allow the Holy Spirit to make us uncomfortable. This is a time to say, Lord, uh, what do you want me to learn? How do you want me to grow through this? How can I become your agent of healing and reconciliation? How can I love my brothers and sisters who don't look like me better? And this is one of the reasons why we want to dive into this topic on Wednesday night. And so this morning, I just particularly want to say to those uh, in the African community in our church, I love you. I'm standing with you. I know that you're hurting. I know that many of you are grieving. You're disturbed by what you've seen. And I hear that. And we are praying for you. And we want to love you the best way that we know how. And, and I also want to just say to you that I know that there have been times when we could have been a stronger voice for you. And I don't want that to be the case anymore. And so I thank you for the support that you've given me. Many of you even this week have reached out to me and shared with me what you're feeling. And, and you've been supportive of us. And we're so grateful for that. Well... That's about all I can think of to say here <laughs> on the spot this morning. So feel free to reach out to us. You know, different uh, as an eldership team, I can tell you we've had more discussions about everything that's going on in the world in this last week than uh, we, we've been discussing in a deeper level than ever before. And I know that even as, a, as an eldership team, many of them have come to me and said, I've been in tears this week, and, and they've been reaching out and saying, you know what, our perspective is changing, we're understanding things that we didn't understand before, and we're excited about, even in the midst of what's happening, how we feel we can grow as a church and be better. This so. last Wednesday, we had a discussion just on how do we, how do we handle all the differences of opinions that we have in, in the world today, and even within the church and we had a great discussion about that. I would encourage you to even go back and listen to that. I think, you'll, I think you'll be blessed by it. And this Wednesday, I really want to encourage you to join us. We are going to be having a discussion on this whole area of prejudice. And uh, I, I, we're, going to, we're going to dive into it. And we're going to look at what the Word of God has to say to us as a church about this area, and I think it's going to be a really important discussion, and so I really want to uh, draw your attention to that in particular, to tune in 8.30 on Wednesday night.